All right, so let's slickety slack, crickety crack, get right into it. This is a circuit I made using the Atmega 328P. Right here I have a LED with a resistor to ground. And that just flashes uh, when it's sending a pulse. I added two headers, the red and the green ones. Uh, red being positive, 5 volts, and green being the, the ground. I have right here the clock setup for the Atmega. It uses an external clock. And right here you can see a bunch of rails that go from the digital pins. Over here I have no rail setup yet. I just have the header. And right here I connected the ultrasonic sensor. And so basically I just have the ground running all the way around onto the ground of this wire. And the positive coming through here under the Atmega and connecting here to the 5 volts and straight across to the ultrasonic sensor. Right here the resistor is connected from 5 volts onto the reset pin to keep it from resetting. For the trigger and echo pins on the ultrasonic sensor, I have echo hooked up to digital pin 9 and trigger to digital pin 10. For the output of the piston, I have digital pin six, and I just plug in the wire in here. So if I grab the piston, I have these three servo wires. So I put the ground, or the green wire, to the ground on the board. And then the red to the power, And then finally, the orange to pin six. And so now when I hook up power, now when I put something in front of it, it will send a short pulse, just like an observer. You can see the LED turns on. It can be a tight fit against the faceplate, so I recommend sanding it down, I'm trying to get a perfect fit. Periodically checking with the sensor itself to see how the fit is. All right, so right there I have the faceplate on and just slide it on. This resin still hasn't completely cured, so it's still like tacky. Got your big eye boy. The circuit I made, it just barely fits in the box. Uh, I still have this amount of room here to add whatever else might be needed. But as far as the observer, goes it just needs to send a short pulse when it detects something in front of it to store the battery so there's enough space to put a big old lipo in there a limitation with the ultrasonic sensor how i have it hooked up right now is that it's sensing around 60 centimeters a range of 60 centimeters and if an object is placed around 30 centimeters in front of it then it will activate so it needs a reference point, reference point being over here. So as you can see right now, it's not activating until it meets the threshold of the 30. So the ultrasonic sensor is shooting a sound wave from the trigger. And when it shoots it, it's able to detect how long it takes for it to come back to the echo pin. If it's set at an angle like this, then the sound wave is getting shot and bouncing off this way, giving a value of zero. And it's not able to come back to the echo pin. The sound wave though can still make its way here on this side and maybe bounce back, causing it to jump around, sensing different values. Ultimately, for this to work, it still needs a reference point and then be able to sense the block. The benefit of using the ultrasonic sensor is that 
it can work with no light. Whereas if you use a photoresistor to sense the light, it won't work uh, when it's dark. So for the paint, I tried two different ways. Uh, just using the paint pens or paint markers. At first I tried mixing the colors just here and then applying it. But the problem was the paint would still come out through the tip. And so it would just mix in more of that color into the mixed color. So then I tried just painting a little bit putting in some more of a different color and I ran my finger down and it actually mixed way better that way so the faceplate it's way too dark here uh, I should have been a little bit lighter around this kind of more whitish color All right, so here's the code being used with that Mega 328P. It's using two libraries, servo.h and nuping.h for the ultrasonic sensor. After that is the initialization of the ultrasonic sensor and the servo. For the ultrasonic sensor, we have digital pin 10 connected to the trigger, digital pin 9 connected to the echo, and a max distance of 60 being set 60 centimeters. And the max is around 400 centimeters that I could detect, but we're just using a smaller 60. You could also use five to 10, just for a single block at a 120th scale. After that is the initialization of a true or false uh, variable called block. Bool is meaning true or false variable. And that'll detect whether or not a block has been placed. So we initialize it in the beginning as false. In the setup, we attach digital pin six to the servo and digital pin eight to an LED to make it flash on or off. The first statement in the loop is if the sonar ping is less than 30 centimeters and the block has not been placed, then it will move the servo or the piston to extended position. It will turn on the light. After a delay of 100 milliseconds, it will then turn off the LED and retract the piston. After it's done all this, it will turn the block statement to true, meaning that a block has been placed. Since we're using a reference point, we're checking whether or not it detects the reference point of more than 30 centimeters away. And if the block statement is true, meaning that a block had been placed before, then it will move the piston to the extended position. It will make the LED turn on after a delay of 100 milliseconds, turn off the LED, and retract the piston. And ultimately putting block as false, meaning the block has been removed. And after all of these checks, it will do a delay of 200, meaning that after all this code has been run, the ultrasonic sensor will trigger again. A disadvantage of this code is of course, it needs to run all of the code in order for the ultrasonic sensor to trigger. It'd be better if you had code where you can just call for the ultrasonic sensor to trigger instead of having to run all of the code. And if you did that, then you could have more precise detection by running an average of three pulses or four pulses or however many you want. And by having that, you'd have less false positives. So that's pretty much it. As always, if you have any questions, let me know and thank you for watching.